Let's talk about how to get the benefits from vitamin D without that toxicity. Now, the danger of vitamin D really stems from calcium, hypercalcemia, too much calcium in the blood. See, vitamin D helps absorb calcium by 20 times in the small intestine. So we're going to get a spike of calcium in the blood. And so hypercalcemia is really the, the big side effect of having too much vitamin D. And that could potentially lead to kidney stones, constipation, frequent urination, dementia, depression, an ulcer, abdominal pain. And just FYI, if the person stops taking vitamin D, um, it's reversible, okay? So that's one point. Second point, it's very rare to have someone with vitamin D toxicity. And this is stated by the Institutes of Medicine as well as the Endocrinology Society. Now, when you measure vitamin D in the blood, if it's greater than 150, that would indicate toxicity, especially if it's taken with some type of calcium in the form of, could be some dairy or milk. All right, a couple things you wanna know. Um, vitamin D doesn't work by itself. It needs other things. It works with vitamin K2. So I always recommend taking vitamin K2 with vitamin D because vitamin K2 keeps the calcium out of the soft tissues, like keeping calcium out of the arteries, keeping calcium out of the joints. So with vitamin K2, you wanna take 100 micrograms, not milligrams, for every 10,000 I use of vitamin D. Okay, that's the ratios. All right, number two, bile salts. Bile salts are very, very important in helping absorb vitamin D. So if a person doesn't have a gallbladder or they're deficient in bile salts, um, they could have a problem getting enough vitamin D. And that can show up, not necessarily in the blood, but it can show up in the conversion of the active form of vitamin D, which I'm gonna get into in a second. Number three, if you're drinking at least two and a half liters of fluid a day, that should be enough to keep the calcium from forming kidney stones. Just that alone. All right, number four, magnesium. Very, very important in the metabolism of vitamin D. In fact, magnesium and vitamin D work together. And then number five is limit the amount of dairy uh, that you consume when you're taking a lot of vitamin D if you're concerned about developing hypercalcemia. So if you're not consuming any dairy and you're drinking enough water, you're not gonna get hypercalcemia because there's not enough calcium in the diet to, to give you that problem. Now, as far as the amounts of vitamin D that I recommend, vitamin D3, on a maintenance dosage between 10,000 and 20,000 international units, okay? Now, for those people that wanna take more than that for therapeutic purposes, let's say, for example, they have an autoimmune condition or they have pain and inflammation, or they have high blood pressure, then you'd wanna take a little bit more, uh, between 20 and 50,000 IUs. And it's done on a short-term basis. Maybe you do it uh, uh, for a month or two. Now, I wanna come back to the point on someone developing toxicity from vitamin D and it being rare. There's several um, studies out there that state that you would have to consume hundreds of thousands of international units of vitamin D for months for you to develop hypercalcemia. Now in the 40s, they used 200,000 to 300,000 international units of vitamin D3 to treat TB and rheumatoid arthritis. And yes, there were some side effects, but they dealt with them. So this whole idea of taking, you know, 10,000, it seems like such a lot, or 20,000, it's actually not as much as you think because if you convert the international units to milligrams, you'll be shocked to, to see how low they are. Now, I've talked about toxicity, but let's mention about deficiency and insufficiency, okay? A deficiency of vitamin D is extremely common. And that would be a measurement of less than 20 NGs per milliliter in the blood. An insufficiency is less than 30 NGs per milliliters in the blood. And so a normal amount of vitamin D in the blood should range between 30 and 50 NGs per ml. And what's interesting is 65% of the population has a vitamin D deficiency and 95% of the population 
as a vitamin D insufficiency. Now, one last point before we go. When they test your vitamin D levels, they're not testing the active form of vitamin D. They're, they always, well, not always, most of the time they test the pre-vitamin D, which is the inactive form. In order for vitamin D to be converted to the active form, you need the liver and the kidney to work correctly. So just realize that when they show high levels of vitamin D, that is the pre-vitamin D, not the active form. This is why it's good also to measure the active form of vitamin D occasionally. All right, thanks for watching. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just wanna clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.